hit the record button. So we are recording. So we can access this later. Just making sure here. There we go. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. I'm so happy to have you here this evening. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You'll see me every now and then, like look off to the side. I have my laptop, I'm recording from my phone and I have my laptop off to the side because I can see you bigger on my laptop and I have you in gallery view. So if you have your camera on, I can see all of you. And if you type something in the chat feature, I can see it right away and respond to it. So my name is Shauna Sue. I own Crooked Door Studio in Marysville. Um, when the pandemic first started, um, you know, our world's got all turned upside down and I went virtual. I went virtual pretty quickly and I'm still virtual. My physical studio is still closed. Um, hoping to have it back open maybe in October. We'll see. Um, but I'm so happy to be able to do these things. I do this every Saturday night at 7 p.m. and it's free. I ask for a $10 donation. Um, that helps me pay my rent to keep my studio open. So, okay, let's go through supplies. I always like to go through and make sure I have everything I need before we get started because there's nothing more frustrating than having to stop and miss something and go get something. So um, the paint that you have in your supply kit is acrylic paint. It's water-based, water-soluble. If you get it on your clothing and it dries, it's a bear to get out, okay? So make sure you have an apron or an old shirt. If you don't have an old shirt on, um, I have been known to flip my shirt inside out. That way I get paint on the inside and not the outside of it. If you do get paint on your clothing and you notice it um, later, if you notice it while it's wet, a little bit of water and scrub it with a, with a rag, it should come out. But acrylic paint, when it dries, it essentially turns to plastic, so it gets in the weave of your clothing. Murphy's Oil Soap is your best friend. I always keep Murphy's Oil Soap with my paint supplies. Um, if you get paint on clothing and you notice it later after the fact, put a little bit of uh, straight up Murphy's oil soap on there. I always point to my shoulder because I'm real bad about getting paint on my shoulders because I'll put a brush in my teeth and turn my head, right? Um, a little bit of Murphy's oil soap on it and then just leave it lay overnight. Come back to it the next day with a toothbrush and you should be able to scrub it out. That's how I clean my brushes too. Um, I'll leave them soak in just a little bit of Murphy's oil soap. Um, I have the same brushes you have. So if I got paint later that was dried up in there over time, that happens. I would take this and put some Murphy's oil soap in a coffee cup, about that much, just enough to cover the bristles, not enough to go all the way up and cover the bezel, but just enough to cover the bristles and leave them soak overnight and then scrub them under some warm water the next day and they'll come nice and clean. So that's, that's your tip for the evening. Okay, I'll give you lots of tips tonight. I'm full of stuff. So paint shirt, apron, so we don't get uh, paint on our clothes. Uh, you all have canvases. So this is the painting that was chosen, right? Um, think about now, are you gonna do your painting vertical? Are you gonna flip it and do it horizontal? Up to you. Think about where you have that might accommodate this painting, if you have a spot over your mantle or on a bookshelf, um, think about where you're gonna arrange it when it's all said and done. This is just an idea. I'm gonna show you the techniques to get through this, but I've seen people do this painting before in the studio and turn it sideways and have a jar here and like a smaller jar here. And this time of year, you could put a couple little pumpkins down there. You can get super creative, up to you, okay? But think about that now, which direction you're gonna put it. Um, the canvases that I have, that I'm using are stretched canvases. So I'm gonna try and remember to paint the edges as I go. Because if I wrap my painting around, I won't have to worry about um, framing it or doing anything with it later. It's done, it's a completed piece. I can frame it if I decide I want to, but I don't have to. So let's see, we have canvas. I'm gonna put our inspiration painting back there behind me. Uh, let's talk about brushes. 
So the brushes that you have, the brushes that I have that I'm going to use tonight, I have the biggest brush in that kit, that wash, that oval wash brush. I'm going to use this for my background. Um, one of the medium filbert brushes. So it looks just like this big brush, but it's just smaller. And then I have my uh, pointy brush. This is my number five, the numbers on the handle, if you can see it. It's not the really tiny one, but these are the ones I'm gonna use. You can use one of, the, one of the smaller ones. You can use something else if that's what works for you, but these are the three I have. And since you have new brushes, I'm gonna have you put them in your water cup. So I have a water cup that's only about halfway full with cool or cold water, never ever warm or hot. It's cool or cold. If you have warm or hot water in here, you may think it's gonna clean the brushes better, which it will when you wash your brushes later. But I'm gonna leave my brushes rest in there while I'm using them. That's a good reminder that when I'm done with a brush, it goes back in there with his friends, keeps it from drying out, keeps it from getting too, too yucky. But if I pull that brush out of there to use it and it's been sitting in hot water, the paint that's in it like curdles. It does something really weird to the paint. So cool or cold. And because you have new brushes, a lot of times when new brushes are sent from the, the factory, from the manufacturer, they have like a starch on them to keep the bristles nice and nice and straight. So I do this whether I have brand new brushes or I have old brushes that are a little stiff. I'm gonna ooh, tap, tap, tap it down in the bottom of the cup and loosen that guy up a little bit, okay? get that starch off of there. If I have um, if I have older brushes, I'm just gonna soften it up where it has maybe a little leftover paint residue in it, okay? So those three in my water cup set that to the side. I have um, a couple paper towels right underneath my water cup just to dry my brushes off on. Uh, something that I always keep in my paint supplies, I always have a paint marker because I am really bad at signing my name in paint. So I just keep a paint marker just in case. That's optional, you don't need a paint marker, but it's always nice to have. And then I have uh, paper plates that I'm using as my palette tonight to keep my paint on. Um, I used to use um, a regular, like a, um, a Corel plate, like a Melmac plate and clean it up every time. but the paper plates are lovely, as long as they have a little bit of coating on them so the paint doesn't soak through. Um, and then that way when I'm done, I can just pitch it. So here's the way my palette looks tonight. I've got white, some yellow, some red. You might have orange. I don't remember if I gave you orange, but I can mix red and yellow and get orange if I want. A really dark blue, phthalo blue, a phthalo green, brown and black. So the paint in those little containers, I just took them and just dumped them out. Um, not all, not all because you're probably gonna have paint left over. The paint in those little containers, get right in front of the camera, sorry about that. The paint in these little containers, as long as you get the lid on and you seal it, this is yellow paint that I've had in my bag since April. So it'll keep as long as you get that lid nice and tight back on it. And when you store it, store it at room temperature. Don't leave it in your hot vehicle like I sometimes have done. Okay. Okay. So I say we go ahead and get started. Everybody ready? Yeah. And like clockwork, there's my husband. Hi, honey. Yeah. Go paint party. Okay, so here's our painting. Let's talk a little bit about how this is gonna work. We're gonna paint the entire background first. And the thing to remember, acrylic paint dries pretty quickly. It blends while it's wet. Once it's dry, it will not blend. So I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. And as I work my way down, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blend as I go. And you can see, I didn't even blend that well. I like the streakiness in that background, but I'm not gonna jump around a lot. I'm gonna work it at the top, get it the way I want it, and slowly work my way down the canvas, side to side brush strokes. 
if I jump around too much, I may come back up here and pick up paint that's half dry and it'll do something weird. It'll be like kind of curdled and it'll start looking funny. So I'm gonna get it the way I want it and slowly work my way down the canvas. I just noticed on this painting, I have like little red hearts. Oh, I like that. Totally unintentional. Okay, so let's get started. I have, I'm gonna start with my big brush. Tap, tap, tap in the bottom of the cup. Loosen that guy up a little bit. Dob him off on the paper towel. I want him to be a little damp, but not, not dripping. If, he, if there's too much water in there, he'll thin the, thin the paint down. Now, anytime I take paint on my brush, I'm always gonna go in the edge. Never the middle of the puddle, always in the edge of the puddle. So if I pull white from this side and it gets yucky, I can clean my brush and then pull white from the other side and still have clean white. So I'm going to use for the background, brown, little bit of black, little bit of white. And because I want it streaky, I'm not gonna mix it ahead of time. So I'm gonna take on my brush, a big old chunk of brown, a lot of paint, big old chunk of brown, the same time, little black, blurp, little white, blurp. So I've got it all on my brush there at the same time. And I'm gonna go side to side. And I'm gonna let those streaks happen. Side to side. Now make sure as you do this that you cover the whole canvas. I don't want to see any speckles, right? I don't want to see any canvas weave. If I can see the canvas weave peeking through, I need to get a little more paint on my brush. Okay? And we talked about painting edges. So if you have a canvas that has that is wrapped around. Go ahead and get that tippy top right now. And each time I take paint, I'm gonna do the same thing. A lot of brown, little black, little white. And just let it be streaky. And if I go long side to side brush strokes, that's gonna help it look streaky, look like wood later. Now remember, as we do this, if you have questions, you can pop them in the chat box. I'm happy to answer them over there. And remember to breathe, right? Oh, let it all out. No pressure. This is going to be what it's going to be. And we're going to cover the whole canvas this way. Now remember, as you do this, your canvas is not bolted in place, right? So I know sometimes when I'm painting side to side, I have a tendency to run downhill. If that's happening to you, if you're starting to run your brush strokes downhill, flip your canvas and go up and down. Sometimes that's easier to get a, to get a straight line. And we're not looking for perfect, right? The idea of those streaky side to side brush strokes, that's going to help us know in the end that it's, it's a wood like surface. Okay. All right. And do you see how I'm, I'm getting it just the way I want it and I'm slowly working my way down? So let me point out, sometimes people will get frustrated. I'm going to get nice and close. People get frustrated because you can see where you pick up your brush and you put it down. If you're getting something that looks like that. I'm doing long side to side brush strokes from one side all the way to the other. So you can't see where I, I pick up and I put my brush down. of painting with other people because everybody 
always uh, approaches things differently. People do things differently. And it's always interesting to see at the end um, what everyone's finished painting looks like because they're all going to be different. It's going to be your interpretation of. I know when I was, uh, when we were talking supplies, I think it was Joanna that said, well, can we make sure there's yellow in there? Because, because I want yellow. I was like, yes, absolutely. It's going to be whatever you want it to be. So if you want a vase full of yellow flowers, that would be lovely. So as I'm doing this, as I'm painting this background, I'm realizing it's kind of dark. I'm okay with that. My background is pretty dark. It may not be coming across in the video, but that just means my flowers that I put on there, I'm gonna make them really bright and colorful, and they're really gonna pop on that dark background. So as we do this, I like to be respectful of everyone's time. And I know we wanna be done um, by about nine o'clock tonight, and we will be. Um, so how about, let's work on this background until about 7.45. My clock right now says 7.23. So at 7.45, we'll come back together and we'll start working on the vase and the flowers, the vase, the, the jar and the flowers and layering from there. So 7.45 will be on our next step. If you have a stretched canvas, this is my reminder to you, paint your edges as you go. It's easier to paint them as you go than it is to try to match them up later. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, where are they? Here, oh, inside the truck. Because I'll just put them in the back. I head to the workshop. Head to the workshop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's keep going. Painting that background. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take another five five-ish minutes or so to get that background done and let it dry just a little. And then I'm gonna do something a little extra in the background that's totally optional, but I'll let you know when that's coming. I wanna, I'm, I'm gonna take my brush with um, a little bit of black and put some lines in there so maybe it looks like slats, like wood slats. But let's go ahead and paint that whole background first.
Here we go. So when my when I feel that the whole background is done, and you don't have to be yet, again, we're not going to move on till 745. But when you feel it's covered, take a step away from it because you know we sit 12 to 18 inches away from it for for so long and then you don't see it for what it is right you have to get away from it and take a look and see if there's anything that needs to be changed anything i might want to fix because my background is so dark and this depends on your light where you're at i'm going to move it move the angle of it a little bit and make sure i've got paint in all the canvas weave and i can see a couple spots that i need a little more paint on my canvas and putting paint um, in places in your canvas where paint may be missing be careful use caution because you don't want to pick up half dry paint so whenever i go in to try to if i'm trying to get paint someplace like i i was missing a spot up here i'll turn my brush skinny ways instead of fat ways i'll turn it skinny ways and shush a little bit of paint in there and that's gonna come in handy when I show you this next little thing we're gonna do. You can use a smaller brush if you want, but I'm gonna continue with this, with this big brush, with this Filbert, my big wash brush. I'm not gonna clean it out yet. This is totally optional, but I'm gonna take it with a little bit of, a little bit of this black. I've got a little bit of brown mixed in my black there, this, this real, real dark black brown. And I'm loading my brush up and I'm going to use it skinny ways. And this doesn't have to be hard and defined, but we're trying to give the idea of like breaks in the boards. So I have a little bit of black brown on there. And I'm going to use it skinny ways and maybe put, oh, a little bit of a shush across there. That is really hard to see, isn't it? Oh, there, there we go. It's not perfect. It doesn't even go all the way across. But it, it is what it is, right? I'm, just, I'm gonna leave it. I feel pretty good. What if I get a little more brown black on there and I come back from the other way? Really light hand, whoops. It's just the idea of the breaks in the boards every now and then. And the beauty of doing this now while your canvas is still a little wet, as if it all goes sideways, you take a little bit of brown and white and shush it back over. Uh, one more right down here. Okay. Hey. Now, if you wanna, if you wanna keep playing with that, you can. Up to you. You can. I've got those little black, those little black breaks in there. You can play with a little bit of white and get some little white shushes across there. Entirely up to you. I'm feeling pretty good with where I'm at, so I think I'm gonna stop. I wound up with some, uh, some chunks of white in my canvas in my background anyway, so I'm not gonna add any more. I'm gonna stop with where I'm at. So when I'm done, I'm gonna put my brush in my water cup, knock some of the paint out of there, and at 7.45, so that's about 13 minutes, 
we'll move on. We'll move on to the jar and the stems and the flowers and then finishing touches on the jar, okay? Okay, and remember, if you have any questions, you can pop them in the chat feature. I feel like I might go to the blow dryer. Oh, I may not have to go to the blow dryer. I may just take another plate. Do a little, a little of this. So if you need to get up, go grab a snack, grab a, grab a beverage. About 12 minutes, we'll move on. And before, before the next step, before 7.45, you're gonna want that canvas pretty dry because I don't want these dark colors interfering with my jar or interfering with my bright flowers. Oh, it's funny. So a little bit ago, um, you'll find if you take any classes with me that I'm a, uh, I'm a chatterbug. I'll just talk to anybody. So you can mute me now if you want. Um, and we'll start painting again at 745. So about 10, 11 minutes before we get started. So the thump that I heard before we got started when I was like, oh, my husband's home. That wasn't him. And I was like, huh. So I just came back over and we started painting. And then my husband came home. So I'm like, I wonder what that thump was. So my, my friend is a baker and she sells uh, her wares at the Richwood Farmer's Market every Thursday night. And we have a standing agreement, a standing arrangement. If I don't make it to the Farmer's Market because it's from three to six. And Richwood is um, halfway between Marion and Marysville. But with it being three to six, it's a good 20 minutes for me to get there. If I can't get out of work on time from my day job and get there, if I don't make it, she saves something for me. So she messaged me to tell me um, that she made rolls with cheese and pepperoni in them. And then she just messaged and said delivered. So I'm thinking that thump was her. So while we're on a, a, a 10 minute break, I'm going to go check and see what she, what she brought. Oh yes, she left a delivery in my in my delivery box. See what she left me. Oh my God, it smells so good. Oh, yes. Do you have a lot of paint on yours? Do you need to? Um, do you need to go to the blow dryer? Maybe. <laughs> she is working furiously trying to fan that. Oh, garlic cheese rolls stuffed with pepperoni. It's when you know you're loved, right? When you're, when you can't make it to the farmer's market and your baker drops stuff off for you at your house. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Joanna just remember to use both arms, right? You don't want to get one big muscular arm. You got to trade off. <laughs> Well, it's one of those things too, if it gets close to 7.45, we've got about, what, eight minutes. If everybody's canvas is still really, really wet, we'll wait, right? We're in no, we're in no hurry tonight, we'll be fine. And my goal tonight is to, um, this is the beauty of us painting from home. If we were at the studio, I'd be like, we're done, and start shutting the lights out. Um, but the beauty of painting from home is, when we get to the flowers at the end, you can stay and play with those flowers as long as you want, right? Just keep carrying on and painting. So my goal is to show you techniques tonight and then you take it as far as you wanna go. I'm curious, does anybody else have their music on? And what are, what are you listening to? You'll have to let me know in the chat feature what you're listening to. I've got a little journey happening. Not gonna sing it because nobody needs that. So as we're waiting on paint to dry, you can see my plate's kind of a mess, but Oh, it's hard to see in the camera, but I still have clean white that I can use out of the other side of it. We're going to need clean white for the next step. Okay. So make sure you have a little bit of clean white because we're going to sketch that jar on there. Yep, I'm with you, Joanna. I have a lot of paint on mine too. I think I need to start fanning. And again, if we need to, I will do whatever you want. If we need to wait until eight, we can. I'll take a poll at 7.45. How's that? It's funny, a, acrylic paint is, um, it's weird. It does different things based on uh, the environment that you're in, based on the humidity, the temperature of wherever it is that you're painting. I love painting outside in the summertime, but the paint dries too, it almost too fast. It's hard to get it on the canvas and move it around before it dries. Um, but tonight I have my uh, dehumidifier and my, my air on and this paint is taking forever to dry. It's one of those things that's a lot easier to control in the studio because we're all there together and we're all moving at the same paint drying rate. When we're all separate in different environments, it's really hard. So I will rely on you guys to tell me um, 
when it's time to move on. Oh, I see. How do I tell other than the touch test to see if it's dry? So I will pick it up if I'm trying to determine where it's still wet. Look at it in the light. If you change the direction of it, change the angle of it in the light, you can see where it's still really shiny. If it's super duper shiny, probably still wet. I can see I've got different, different wet spots. Yeah, you don't want to touch it because if you touch it to see if it's still wet, Stand by, Joanna. If you touch it to see if it's still wet, you'll mess up your background, right? Um, what happens if it's still wet? So we're going to put the jar on. The jar is going to be in white. I'm thinking. I'm thinking through this. So the way we're going to work this, I'm going to sketch where the jar belongs. That's my next step, but that's not the final jar. I'm going to sketch where it belongs. And then that's good. That's good, Michelle and Zach. And then I'm going to put the stems on because I know the stems have to stay inside my jar top. So now that I think about it, I'm not, I don't think I'm super concerned if it's still a little wet. Yeah, I, I'm not super concerned because I'm gonna sketch where the jar belongs. I'm gonna put the stems on there. And then I'm gonna come back and fix the jar and put the jar over top of the stems. So no, I'm not too concerned if it's still wet. Yeah. Now that, now that I've thought through that, I'm not super concerned. I mean, you don't want it goopy wet because you don't want to mess up your background by putting the jar where you put the jar on there, but a little, a little tacky, I think we're fine. So it's 745. Anybody still panicking? Anybody not ready to move on? I don't see any panicked faces. All right, let's do this. Okay, so let's talk about how we're gonna put the jar on there. So again, this is, this is just mine. It's entirely up to you on what you want yours to look like. But for this painting, I'm gonna put the top of my jar on first. Split your painting vertically in half, and that's where we're gonna put the top of the jar. And if I find halfway across, my jar does not go halfway left to right. It's a little, maybe a third, a little more than a third, but not halfway across. So I'm going to use my, one of my pointy brushes, one of my round brushes. So again, I'm using round number five in that pack. Use whatever one you want. Pulled it out of my water cup because again, the brushes, Brushes might be new or they might be old and used with paint residue. So I'm gonna tap it in the bottom of that cup, soften it up a little bit. If it's new, get that, um, get that starch off of it. And then dry it off on my paper towel. And again, I'm just wiping it on my paper towel. I'm okay if there's a little bit of water in it. And like I said, we never take paint from the middle. We always take it from the edge. And as long as I do that, now I can use out of this edge and have clean white over here. And then later when I do my flowers, I can use clean white out of this side. Okay, so white, I'm using round number five, and I'm taking a little bit of, little bit of white paint on there. And you see how I'm loading it. I'm pulling it, twirling it a little bit to keep it to a point. Just a real gentle twirl. Split your painting in half vertically. That's where the top of that jar is going to go. 
and it's not going to go halfway across. You start with a third, maybe a little, a little more than a third, but not halfway. And I apologize to get it straight. I'm going to have to step in front. Okay. So I'm finding halfway. I'm mapping it out in my brain. I'm coming across. Oh, my jar's a little wiggly. It's okay. There we go. I, I think I feel good about that. I know that's really hard to see, but I've just put a straight line, straight-ish, <laughs> halfway, not halfway across. Okay. I'm going to make my lines a little bolder so you can see what I'm doing, but I want you to keep some nice fine lines here. But I'm going to go a little bit heavier to make it easier to see. Now the, the rung of my, the, the top part where the lid screws on my jar, it's about two fat fingers high. Okay, about two fat fingers. So I'm gonna come down, straight down, about two fat fingers, and come straight back over this way. So all I've done is drawn a long skinny rectangle. But that's the top part of my jar where the lid screws on. There we go. And again, this is not the finished jar. This is just the outline so we know where our stems live. Okay, and because this is an old mason jar, I'm going to give it a little shoulder. So I'm going to put my finger right there, and I'm going to come in the width of my index finger. So I'm going to start about the width of my index finger, right about there. And then I'm going to bump it out and come straight down. And again, I have to get in front of it because that's not super straight. So, I just came in about the width of my finger and gave it a little shoulder and then brought it out to match the rung of the jar, the, uh, the lid. My jar kind of bubbled out there a little bit. It's okay. This is where we remind ourselves this is an old mason jar. There we go. And we know old glass mason jars are a little bubbly. They're a little wavy. It's that old curvy wavy glass. That's all I'm going to do with the jar right now. Do more to it later, but that's all I'm going to do right now. Okay. So everybody should just have a basic jar outline on there. Our next step is to put our stems in our jar. And yeah, I think I'm okay if the background is still a little wet. I think I'm okay with that. So the stems that are going in my jar, They stay in the jar. I know, I, I'm sure it feels like I'm beating this point to death, but every time we do this, every class I've done this painting, I've seen somebody take a stem right outside the, 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 the edge of the jar, right outside that side of the jar. It's interesting. It happens every time. And I think it's because we get to go in on those stems and we just go crazy. And before we know it, we have one that has jumped all the way outside. 
The reason for putting this on here is to make sure the stems wind up inside the jar. So I'm going to use green, yellow, white. Different combinations with my pointy brush, different combinations of green, yellow, white. And you can see with the green, yellow, white, each time I pick up paint, I'm getting a different shade of green. So I'm not gonna mix it. I'm gonna pick the paint up the way I did in the background. I'm not gonna mix it ahead of time. I'm gonna take with my pointy brush, a swipe a green, a swipe a yellow, a swipe a white, and see what happens. Maybe next time I take white, yellow, green. Maybe next time I take yellow, white, green. That's gonna give me all those different lovely shades of green. Um, if we're looking for numbers, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ish. Ten ish stems, and they go all the way to the bottom. Some of them not quite. That guy stopped a little. But all the way to the bottom, and they stay inside the, the jar rim. And to do that, I'm gonna paint these stems kind of the way I would paint tree branches. I'm gonna hold my brush um, pretty, pretty far away. I'm holding it about halfway away from the end. And when I paint, I'm gonna twirl really slowly. That helps me use paint all the way around my brush. If I hold it the way I hold a, a pencil or the way I hold a pen and I hold it perpendicular to my canvas, my tendency is um, to push and flatten that brush out. Let me show you what I mean. I'm just gonna load some green on here. So if I hold it the way I hold, the way I hold a pencil, I'm gonna have a tendency to do this. Gets kind of a little fat, which isn't bad down in the jar, but you want it to taper. You want it to get a little thinner as you go up. But if I hold it like this, and I'm gonna hold it parallel, not perpendicular, I'm gonna hold it parallel to the canvas, I'm barely holding it at all. If I'm not careful, I'll drop it because I don't have much of a grip on it. I'm gonna hold it parallel and I'm essentially just dragging it. I'm not putting force on it. I'm just dragging it and I'm twirling. That gives me a much more natural look, makes it a little less cartoony, much more natural. And by twirling my brush, it's gonna help me use the paint all the way around and get those lovely different colors. So again, 10-ish. Remember to take your stems wherever you want color. So if all of your stems come up and stop right here, your flowers are only gonna be this big. So keep that in mind. I want some of my stems to go out and hang over because I want this top part of my canvas filled with brilliant color. So I have to put stems up there so my flowers have something to live upon. Okay, here we go. So green, yellow, white, a different combination each time. So green, little yellow, little white. And you see, I just drug it through there not mixing it. I'll start right here. There we go, here's number one. I'm do that nine more times. Breathe, everybody breathe. I just looked over and saw, saw people are like, oh, just breathe it out, like exhale, right? So let's see, green, white, yellow this time. And this one, oh, he might crisscross. Oh, he's gonna go all the way over. Again, stay inside your jar. Stay inside that top, that top part of your jar. 
We'll go green, yellow, white again. Uh, yellow, white, green. You can see if you look at my stems, there is nothing perfect about them. They're kind, they're kind of a mess. They're kind of wiggly. I'm okay with that, right? If I have one that really makes me crazy, I can fix it. But part of a big part of being an artist is letting whatever happens happen and just go with it. If you obsess over it and you try to try to fix it, it starts to get really frustrating. So this, we're just gonna let it happen. And if you have big fat stems, well then maybe they're tulip stems, right? Tulip stems are pretty big. Four, again, I think 10 is my goal. And I'm taking those stems wherever I want color to live. I want some color to live all the way over here, so I have to bring myself a stem over here. But stay inside that jar. Stay inside the top, the top rim of the jar. So what do you think as you do this? Are your are all your stems straight up and down? Are they starting to crisscross in the jar? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you'll see here in a little bit when I go to put flowers on all of these stems, I'll put flowers on, on all of them. But then if I add a stem in between someplace, or sometimes I'll even pretend there's a stem there that's not. Those are all, that's all doable. Those are all things we can do later. But for the most part right now, I want to spread those out every place I want color. I think I'm going to stop. I'm feeling pretty good about that. So blessing and curse as we um, because I paint stems that way, I, same way I would paint tree branches, by rolling that brush. I love that because I'm using paint all the way around that brush, I'm making it go further, and I don't have to reload my brush in the middle of a stem. But that also means if I have a lot of paint on my brush, that I have the tendency of getting little paint boogers, a little glob of paint, which is fine unless I'm going to paint something else over it. It's going to take forever to dry. So I said next we're going to come back and fix this jar. So I want to look, and again, I can flip it and look at it in the light. I want to look right around my jar and see if I have any paint boogers, any rolls of paint that maybe need to be smoothed out a little. So I'm looking, I've got a roll right here. So I'm just gonna ease that with my finger and oh, get rid of that booger, that glob of paint. I've got a nice big fat glob of paint up here, right here. So I'm just gonna take my finger 
and just smooth that out. It'll dry a little faster. Here we go. It's my jar I'm mostly worried about, but I saw that big paint booger up there and I thought, ooh, he's gonna take forever to dry. Let's just go ahead and smooth him out a little bit. Now by doing that up here, I made, you can see I made that stem really big and fat. It's okay, I'm gonna put flowers on it. You'll never see it later. I would use caution doing that down here where you're gonna see your stem, so. So I've got a couple boogers down there, but they're not gonna interfere. They're right in the middle of the jar. They're not close to the edge, so I'm not gonna worry about them. So we'll take another few minutes on those stems and then we'll dig into the into the jar and then we'll get into those flowers. One more look at it here. Make sure I don't have any wet green on my jar, on those white lines of the jar. It's one of those things we, uh, uh, my stems did go all the way to the bottom. On the original, Joanna, I had I had a couple that, that didn't quite make it, but yeah, for the most part, all the way to the bottom. Funny, this is one of those things where, um, where we improvise, right? If something, if something goes, we don't like to say wrong because it'll be what it's meant to be, but if something turns out differently than we think it should, we improvise. And I think that's what happened on the original painting when I wound up with blue in my jar. I smeared through something and I was like, oh, but old jars are, are blue. <gasps> Ooh, marbles in the bottom. I love the idea of marbles in the bottom. Do you need me to show you how I would do? I'll show you how I would do marbles just for giggles. You do marbles however you want, but I'll show you because that'll help um, with our flowers, I think. So if I were gonna do marbles in the bottom, I would take um let's see maybe some of this some of this mess of <laughs> that happens some of this um green white color i take some of that and then i'm going to take a swipe of ooh, a swipe of blue that might be pretty so i have a color on there that's like a mint green and then i'm going to tape take just a little swipe, oh, it's kind of dry, little swipe. I'm not blending it. I'm leaving it as a separate color. So that blue is just right on top. And then set that brush down and give a little work. It's hard to see on there, but by doing that, by putting that blue on top of the green, you wind up with like a two-tone, a two-tone thing happening there. Ooh, that one's even better. The trick with those is not to blend and blend and blend and blend and blend until they all turn into the same color. You let them be what they're gonna be, right? Oh, so fun. Yes, I think you absolutely could put marbles in the bottom. Okay, 
let's move back to the jar and the marbles. That's something you can do. You can do now. You can do later. Up to you. I'm going to take my pointy brush that I just used for my stems, clean it out. To get the paint off of it, you might need to um, tap, tap, tap it, hit it in the bottom of the cup lightly, right? Tap, tap, tap it in the bottom of the cup. That'll help you knock the extra paint off of it. So I'm back to just a clean, pointy brush. So I'm going to take a little bit of clean white right here, just a little bit. And I'm going to put, I'm going to go back over the top. I'm going to go back over these stems because the stems are in the jar now. I need to put them in the jar. They're laying over top of the jar, but they need to be in the jar. So I'm going to go back over this line right here. And I'm putting them back inside the jar. And I'm going to go over this line. So I'm doing that with solid white. Because this is an old mason jar that would have, not a super old jar because the super old ones had clamp lids, that's a whole different thing. But a mason jar, it would have the screw on lid. So I'm going to start over here. This is with solid white. I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna go about two thirds of the way across. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, starting from the right down a little lower. And I'm gonna go about two thirds of the way across. And that helps it look like a screw on lid. Now, to really put those stems in there. I want this to look a little more like glass. So I'm gonna use my little brush. It has a tiny bit of white on it and I'm gonna dry brush it. So here's what I mean. I'm gonna start on that line and then I'm gonna come down into the jar a little bit with the tiny, tiniest bit of paint. There is really no paint on my brush at all. It's dry brushing. It's like chalky. Oh, I got a little, got a little green, got a little green yellow in there. A little dry brush. I think I might do a little up here too. I don't have any paint left on my brush to be able to dry brush it. When that happens, I'll get a little bit of paint on my brush. So I got just a little bit on it. That's too much to dry brush though. I'm gonna wind up with, with harsh white lines if I'm not careful. So you can take this and you can just wipe it off on your paper towel in a clean spot. I usually wipe it on my hand because on my paper towel, I can't tell how much paint is left on my brush because my paper towel is white. But on my hand, I can tell. And I know paint will wash off my body. It just won't wash out of my clothes. So I will actually wipe this off on my hand. So now I can see the tiny amount of paint that I have left on my brush. And then I can come up here and dry brush this a little. Looks very chalky. Oops. Okay. Now the original had a, um, had a heart in it. My stems there are still wet, so I'm gonna wait for that. I'll wait and put that on later. Um, I've seen people write um, ball across there for a ball jar. Um, 
I've seen people write their last name across the jar. That's kind of fun. Um, I think I'm going to take with my um, with my little brush. I'm going to take the teeny, 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 teeny tiniest bit of blue paint, like like tiny. You're almost going to want to dry brush this. So I've got the tiny, tiniest amount. I'm going to put some little blue shushes in there. Maybe a little more than that. Not everywhere. Just every now and then a little zhoop of blue. Just a little shush. If it's too blue, a little white back over it. But I love the idea of that tiny, tiny bit of blue. That takes me back to an old mason jar too. Okay. So I think we're going to get ready to move on to flowers. About two minutes and we'll move on to flowers. Again, if you're not done with your jar, that's fine. My goal is to show you techniques and then you can just keep on playing. two minutes and I'll show you flowers. There are really only two kinds of flowers on that painting as I'm looking at. It. So I will show you how to do those. It's just using different colors of paint and using the brushes different ways. So let's take another minute or so. I'm going to get a beverage. I'm going to take a minute and look and make sure I don't have any green boogers. A uh, little green paint booger, because I don't want that green changing the color of my, my flowers. And I'm checking out my plate to make sure I have all the colors that I'm going to need. That includes some clean white to be able to get to your clean white there. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Okay, let's talk about flowers. So again, there are really only two kinds on here. It's just about using the brushes differently, using different brushes. Um, and then this is something totally optional. You can decide later if you wanna fill space and put in some little whoopie woos. Those are just kind of extensions on the stems, the green curly cues. You can decide later if that's what you want to do. You can decide later too of the original, which I don't even know what I've done with it at the studio. I couldn't find it, but you could write something on the side of the jar if you wanted. That's where a paint pen always comes in handy, but um, I will show you how to do that later. So let's go ahead and talk flowers. So there's two kinds of flowers. There are these that are just round. These are going to happen in excuse me, in two different steps. And then there are, there are these, this pink one, this yellow one, these blues, the white ones, the orange. There, it's all the same thing. The white one's up here. We pull in and then come down and pull a little to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, and we offset them as we come down. You can use your big brush fat ways. I think that's what happened here. I used it fat ways. You can turn and use that big brush skinny ways. You can use your small brush to get some little white dainty ones. 
So let's start with these big round guys and then we'll get into those and we'll start filling in. So I'm going to, I'm going to pick my primary color and if you love yellow, make that your primary color. If you love red, make that your primary because these are going to be the biggest ones to start and then we're going to start filling in with little ones later. Okay. My word of caution slash advice, the paint that we're using is student grade paint. You may have found this out with the brown on, in the background. All of the colors are very transparent. It's student grade paint, which means I can buy it by the bucket load pretty inexpensively, but it also means it's essentially thinned down. It doesn't have as much pigment in it, so it's gonna make it really transparent. The only solids that we have, the only opaques, opaque colors that we have are black and white. I say all of that to say, if you want a brilliant yellow flower on there, you can't just use yellow. You have to mix white with it to make it solid, to make it opaque. If you don't mix white with it and you try to put just yellow on here, you're gonna see your brown background through and it's gonna make your yellow really dingy and really dirty. So you're gonna have to add a little bit of white to whatever you do really, whatever colors you put up here. Okay, so I'm gonna put in, I think three, of these big round, roundy round dudes. I'm gonna start with my, uh, one of my medium filbert brushes. It's the brush that is, looks like the big wash brush. It's just smaller, right? He's rounded, but he's flat this way. And I think there are, there are maybe two in your pack. This is the bigger of the two. Up to you. So I think pink is gonna be my primary color. So I'm gonna take, this takes a lot of paint. Don't be stingy with your paint. The more paint you get on there and the texture, the better it is, I think. And the more flowers you get on there and the more, the bigger and fuller your bouquet is, the better. So we're looking for a riot of flowers. So I've got red. And then like I just did with the marble a second ago, I'm gonna take the littlest swipe of white, blurp, right on top of it. That white is laying right on top. And I have so much paint on there, it's gooby on my brush. I've got a ton of paint on there. So I think I'm gonna start with one, a big, um, a big branch of flowers here. It's gonna set right on the jar. So I'm not even necessarily going on the A stem, I'm just kind of putting them on there. So I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna stop. If I keep going, it will all turn into one monotone shade of pink. And what I love is that I have different shades happening there. So I'm gonna load my brush again. I'm gonna get closer this time. I'm gonna load it with red little swipe of white. I'm gonna set my next one right on top of it, a little smaller, and I'm gonna go one, two, three, stop. And, oops, red, little swish of white. Getting smaller as I go. Soup. <laughs> there we go. Now, I'm gonna stop there because I feel pretty good about that. I have different shades of pink. If you feel like your flower got all the same shade of pink and it got kind of monotone, you can, I'm gonna pop this brush in my water cup. I'm gonna go to a pointy brush. And what if I just take white and I come back in here and I do little uh, half, little half circles that are offset. Shoop, shoop, shoop. 
and I accentuate some of that a little. Let's do that again. Round and around and around. Just a little brush, a little bit of white. Oops. And go around and around. Round. Just getting little swishes of white in there. Once you get away from it, it all makes sense. I have no idea what kind of flower this is. It just makes my heart happy. I don't know where you would be that you would see flowers stacked one on top of another that way. But it makes me happy and it's an easy way to get a big, a big bunch of color. So I'm going to do two more of those, and then I'm going to move on to a different flower. So let's see, red and white, and I'm just going to fly through these. And then I'll be able to move on to the next one and show you, show you something different. And let's see. It's funny, when I get all the way out to the end, I'm not even on a stem and they're not even touching, but my brain helps me make the connection, right? We don't even have to put them on a stem. Okay. So there's that. Let me clean that brush out. And I think I'm gonna go to yellow and white. Let me show you how to do those other flowers. So I'm using that same uh, medium filbert brush. I'm gonna load it up with yellow. And remember, I have to add white because the yellow by itself is not enough. It's too transparent. So I'm gonna take a little blurp, a little swoop of white right on the end. And I love not mixing it. I love just letting that white hang out on the end. And what if we use this brush skinny ways? Not so skinny, because there's a ton of paint on there. But pick one of these stems, oh, this one. I'm gonna use that brush skinny ways, and I'm pulling into the stem, okay? So I'm pulling in, oh, that's pretty. Look at all that paint on there. And I'm gonna come down to the left, come down a little to the right, the left, to the right, left, right. With that, it's just gonna overlap that pink one all the way down. Pretty. There is so much paint on there. I've got big, like, big goobers, big boogers of paint. I'm okay with that. And because I did that swoop of white right on the end of my brush, my flowers are a lot lighter up here. And as I come down, they get deeper because I'm getting into that yellow on my brush. And I'm actually even picking up a little bit of that pink red. Now, you can use this brush, you can use it skinny ways. What if I load it up and I turn it and I use it that way? I think this time I'm gonna take some yellow and some red and then a little blurp of white right on the end. I've got a whole hot mess on that brush. Again, if I'm not careful, it's gonna blop onto the floor because I've got so much paint on there. But I'm gonna use it flat ways this time. So again, start out at the end, pull in, Come down to the left and pull in, to the right, to the left. You see I'm offsetting them as we go. Oh, that's fun. What if we do that same thing with the big brush, the big brush that we used in the background? And I'm feeling bold, I'm putting some blue on there. I'm doing it. Blue. <gasps> Ooh, blue and purple, let's go. Let's do a blue one first. And then if I mix the blue with red, I'll get purple. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go blue and then a swipe of white. And this swipe of white, I'm gonna use the one that has a little yellow in it, a little yellow green. That's gonna be pretty. And let's pull straight down and then left, right, left, right. That's okay, he's not my favorite. If I take that blue, I mix it with some red. Looks really dark and dingy right now, but if I add some clean white, Zerp right on the end. This one's going to be big, so I'm going to use my brush flat ways. I have the big brush and I'm using it flat ways. I'm going to pull down, left, right, left, right. Oh, that one's pretty. That one makes my heart happy. What if, uh, what if we wanted to do some tulips? You could do a tulip on there, a couple tulips. Let me show you how to do a tulip. Let's see, pick a color that makes you happy. Again, I'm loving that purple. So I'm loading my brush up with red and blue and taking a little swipe of white. I'm using that big brush. And what if I put a tulip right here? I'm gonna set that brush down and I'm gonna pull in and I'm kind of turning a little bit as I pull down. Because of the way I loaded my brush, look at all those lovely colors. I'm gonna do the same thing. So I set my brush down, pulled down into the right. I'm gonna set it down. I'm kind of wiggling it, setting it down. Pull straight down and set it down and pull down into the left. Tulip, shabam. I can't have just one, I feel like I need a couple on there. Let's see, I think I need yellow tulips. Clean that brush out. Okay, yellow. So again, base color, got my yellow, and then swipe a white. Z oop, clean white. Clean white's getting to be a challenge. <laughs> okay. I think I want one right here. So I'm setting my brush down, and I'm going to pull down into the middle, to the right. Pull straight down down and into the left. I'm using that, I always think of the brushes I'm using as helping me define what the outside of my petal will look like. So this is helping me define, this is what the end of that tulip petal is gonna look like, right? And pull down into the middle. If we paint the other way, if we paint, I shouldn't say backwards because everybody has their own way of doing it, but if I set my brush down and I pull out, my flowers have a tendency to turn into fans. And I, I love the idea that I can use this to determine what the edge of my petal is gonna look like and have that nice crisp edge and pull in. Up to you. It's, uh, it's all about your, your style, your technique. Let's I'm going to mix some yellow and red, Take a swipe of white, do, start to fill in some gaps here. Oh, that's fun. I feel like I might take my little pointy brush with just white and just pretend I don't have any stems left. But what if I just pretend there's one here? Pull down, 
left, right, left, right. They're teeny little dainty. This is a nice filler. One out here. Straight in, left, right, left, right. It's funny, there's there's no stem there. There's nothing there. And you can put a stem there if that makes you feel better, but I have a pretty good imagination. Okay, so I feel like I'm to the point I have a lot happening there and I'm afraid if I do much more um, Some of my colors are going to start to blend and turn a little messy on me. I already have kind of a of a little hodgepodge hot mess happening here. I think I'm going to let that dry. So that's something you can come back and play with later. I'm going to let that dry. And then what if I take some of these these little white guys these these tiny little white ones, and I put a couple of those right there in front. That might be lovely. But I can't do that till that's dry, and there's a lot of paint there, so that's gonna take some time. So let's talk about a couple, um, a couple finishing things that you could do. And then again, since you're at home, you can just keep playing. You just play away. Um, I think I'm gonna put a couple little curly cues out there. Now my paint has been setting here for a while, so it's starting to get a little dry. If that happens and my paint starts to feel a little dry and a little sticky, I'm gonna take this and dip it in my water cup and tap it off. So I have just a drip of water on there. I'm gonna come over here in this green and thin it down just a little right there in the edge. I'm using a little drip of water just to thin that paint down a tiny bit. And that'll help it if you add just a little bit of water to it, that'll help it come off the brush a little easier. It'll stretch it a little further. Okay, so I've got green, a little yellow, a little white. I'm gonna put a couple little curly cues out here. They just kind of come out from the middle of nowhere. And whatever they are is what they are. I kind of didn't even touch the touch the canvas right there. It's okay. I'm gonna let it be what it's gonna be. Because if I go over and try to fix it, um, it'll start to get fat and out of control. So we're just gonna let it let it be. Ooh, that one got fat and out of control. It's okay because I also know I can let it dry and put a flower over top of it. I need one right there. Okay. Okay, so curly cues. Oh, if you're gonna write something on your jar, um, I feel like I might wanna write love right there on my jar. I'm gonna take it and flip it so I can write right on the on the side of my jar. Um, people ask me what I do with these paintings because I have so many of them. The canvas that I have, um, it's stretched. So I can go to uh, Walmart or Hobby Lobby or someplace and get a metal wreath hanger. And because my canvas is stretched, there's that little gap up under there and I can bend that metal wreath hanger and get it up under there and then hang this on my front door and change it out for the seasons. So some of my paintings, I'll write my last name on it. So I'll have the, the Jordan family or, or whatever on the, on the front. So that's something to ponder. So um, something that I, oh, I don't have one here. Um, chalk pencils are lovely. Uh, you can, at Hobby Lobby, you can get pencils that are white chalk. 
those are lovely to be able to, if you're going to write something, to be able to sketch it on there really lightly. Because if you don't like it, it's just chalk. You can just lick it and wipe it back off. You can write in a pencil, but for a, a background this color, it's going to be hard to see. Um, you can just go right in there with your, with your brush. Um, I have seen some people write it. If they're going to write a word there and they're trying to map it out, write it with just a wet brush first. So you can see the, the watermark and see where it's going to live. I'm a big fan of holding, holding my brush above it and, and just air writing it first. So if I'm going to write love, I'm not even touching the canvas. I'm just going to air write it. And that helps me get in my brain where I need to start and finish. So again, if you thin that paint down a little bit, it's going to go a little further. So I took just a little drip of water right there in the edge of some clean white, which again is a challenge at this point. Thin it down just a little. Okay. And I have to step in front to get it, to get it on there straight. And I'm gonna air write it first, in cursive. Okay with that. Not the best, but I'm okay with it. Need to accentuate that L a little bit. So I did it really lightly first, and now I can go back over it. And the beauty of this is you should be able to rest your hand because we've worked on this long enough, long enough ago. It should be dry. So I did it light first, and now I'm going to go over it and accentuate it. So that's up to you if you want to write something. You don't have to. Paint pens are lovely for this. I feel like that might need some glitter. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see, the last thing we could do here is to put something on the jar. So I'm going to check and make sure my stems are dry. If you're going to put something on your jar like a heart, or a word, you're gonna want it to look um, look like glass. So, excuse me, we're gonna paint it solid first and then dry brush around it to soften it. So if you're gonna put something on your jar, pointy brush with white, I'm just gonna do a heart. So I'm gonna paint it first solid. And then I'm going to take that and wipe it off back to my hand again because I know the amount of paint I have on there. And I'm going to go around it to the outside and to the inside and just soften it with that dry brush a little. Just kind of tracing around it. Since I have blue. In my, in my jar, I might add the tiny, tiniest little bit of blue into my heart. Just a little blue in there. Okay. I do believe we've come to the end. There's something that I can show you. I see you're all still just working away. If there's something I can show you, you can type it in the chat box. I'm happy to share with you whatever I know. And what do you think? Should we do a, uh, should we do a group picture? 
Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing some yeses. Okay. So if we were at the studio all painting together, um, I would, I would call it an end. I'd be like, we're done for the night. I'd have you all go down to the end of the studio and I'd take a group picture. But since we're all painting virtually, can't, that's a lot harder to do. So we'll call this painting done at, how about nine o'clock? Cause that gives you time to play. Okay, I see you. So that gives you some more time to play. So how about by 10 p.m., that'll give you an hour. By 10 p.m., I'll have, I would like to see, I'd like to see your faces. I'd like to see you selfie with your painting and send that to the studio. You can send it to um, Crooked Door Studio on Facebook. You can private message it to me or you can email it to me and I'll go ahead and put my email in the, in the chat feature so you can copy it and paste it. You'll wanna copy it and paste it though uh, before we end. Yes, Crooked Door Studio on Facebook. Uh, you'll, see my, you'll see my logo. It, there's, I know it's hard to see on my messy apron, but there's a door that's kind of crooked and whimsical and there's a cat sitting in the middle of the door. That's my logo on, uh, on Facebook. Um, I will put my email in the chat feature, make sure and copy it down before we end, because once we end, you, you won't be able to access it. You won't be able to access the chat anymore. So let me do that real quick. Okay, so I put it there in the chat feature. It's Shauna Sue at CrookedDoorStudio.net. You have until 10 p.m. Oh no, Joanna, can somebody help Joanna out? She's on the struggle bus. Oh, Joanna, you have my email though, right? Yeah, yeah, you have my email. So I just need to see you selfie with your painting or have somebody take a picture of you with your painting and send it to me. So then at 10 o'clock, when I have everybody's picture, I'll put those together in a collage and share them on uh, Facebook for Crooked Door Studio. So you'll be able to see all of, your, all of your friends there with their paintings, okay? So we're done for the night. If there's anything else I can help you with, if there's anything I can help you accomplish. I'm, uh, I'm so happy we all got to play together tonight. Um, I'm actually gonna leave this open for a few minutes. I'm going to, oh, the swirly thing, yeah. Load your brush just like you would um, for the stems. So pointy brush. And just like we did, um, I thinned my paint down a little. That's the only thing I did different because my paint is starting to get sticky because it's been here for a while. So I took a little bit of water and just thin my green down just a little bit there in the edge with that little bit of water. There we go. Green, a little yellow, a little white, got it all on there. And then just pick a spot. They don't even really connect to anything. Um, I feel like I might have one here. It just kind of comes out from nowhere. They just start in between some of the flowers. And I'm just, I'm just gonna do it, right? We're just gonna breathe and do it. So with a real light pressure, whoop, zerp. Easy peasy. This one up here got a little fat. I'm gonna wait for him to dry and put some flowers over him. Just like that. I need to take a minute and step away from it and come back and look at it and see what colors I need, what I need to, uh, what I need to add. I need a couple more up in here. When I get to this point on a painting where I'm thinking it might be done, but I'm not sure, take a picture of it on your phone. Walk away from it. Don't look at it for a minute and then look at the picture on your phone. Your phone will pump up the contrast and you'll see it differently on your phone than you would see it in real life. It's so weird. 
But if I think I'm to a point where I might be done, I'll take a picture of it and walk away and look at that picture on my phone and I'll know what needs to be fixed or changed or if it really is done. So little tip. I'm full of little tidbits. I've been doing this for quite some time now. Okay, let's see. Um, made a mess when trying to do a tulip and don't know how to fix it. Um, if you're if you're really not digging the tulip, I would wait for it to dry. Put put another flower that you're really liking. Put another flower back over top of it. Just make sure when you do that to add some white to it, to add some white to your color, pick a brighter color, add white to it to make it more opaque and less transparent. So like, I, I don't know how I'm feeling about this yellow tulip right here. I'm not sure. I'm gonna wait for it to dry. And then I might do another one of these big fat dudes, this big fat purple dude. I might do another one right there. And it's okay if I see a little bit of the color behind it, a little bit of that yellow leftover behind it, but I'll put that purple right over top of it, just cover him right up, but let it dry. That's, uh, that's one of the hard things. Um, Bob always says, right, or Bob Ross says, there are no mistakes, there are only happy accidents. But when you feel like you have a mistake, like a flower that you don't like, that your brain and your heart tells you is a mistake that you wanna change, you gotta sit in your mistake for a minute. And that's painful, that's hard. You gotta sit there and let it dry. Because if you go too soon, you'll just get mud. Okay, I see you guys are working away. I'm gonna step away from, for just a minute. Um, I'm going to give you the opportunity to unmute yourself and talk for a little bit. I need to go check on my chickens and make sure they made it in the, in the coop okay. So I'm going to unmute. Okay, there you go. So you now have the opportunity to unmute yourself. Give me about five minutes, I'll be back. I just need to go make sure my chickens all made it in okay. And I will be right back. So think of any questions you have. Chat amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. Can I see everybody's picture? What's that? Can I see your picture? This was hard. This was really hard. And I like, I always obsess over something and then I can't move on. So there's like one flower that I just Ooh, like. Oh, very nice. Well, kind of. Let me see. Ooh, I love it. So pretty. I love like, is that orange or yeah. like peachy? Yeah, I really like that. Linda, let me see your yellow. Okay. See, you, you filled yours a lot better than mine. Very nice. Wow. I, Jessica, I didn't see yours. Yeah. Ooh, wow. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All Don't right. forget to paint the bottom, you guys. I'm not done yet, but. Ooh. Looks very tropical. Yeah. Well, it was supposed to be white and green only, but then I added too much yellow and then that flower just took off. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever it's fine here's here's mine but i'm still working on it oh nice. i like the colors i don't like this guy i'm gonna have to do something with him <laughs> Dad, okay. how did hannah do sheila she did great did you see her <sighs> this is hannah's oh, oh my god beautiful oh. I've never painted on canvas before, so this is my first time. She's, yeah, I have. she's done it before. That was really okay. good. Jessica, your, your jar looks really I'm good. Sure. Oh, okay. Here's my dad. Now, not bad. Nice. Ooh, yeah. Good job, Bill. Oh, good, oh, good. Yeah. Very nice. And great jar. <laughs> I'm going to let Laura finish Ooh, mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's cheating. Nice. Alma, where's Alma's picture? Where is Alma? Where'd she go? Yes, great. Oh, oh good job is. there. There she is. Show us your picture, Alma. Hold your picture up. Ah, 
Oh, okay, good. good. Yes. Here. You're on mute. We can't like, hear you. Unmute yourself. On the bottom left hand corner, there's a little mute button. I'm going to say, I wonder if I can unmute Alma. Yeah, you should be able to. There we go. Alma, we Alma go. should be unmuted. There she is. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how to take a selfie with me for this. I don't either. Where's one of your boys? Well, they're what? not. Oh, just like this. Yeah, so. If you can do a selfie, that's lovely. But if not, a picture of, uh, of your painting. But I love to see your faces in the paintings. What I would do is like, Alma, I would put your painting behind you and then take it off. And then with, it. How, do you, how do you do it with a computer? Oh, you'd have to do it on your phone. Oh, okay. Or like, or I could use my, my iPad. Yeah. Okay, got it. I'm okay. so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, here's Dan's. I'll show his off. Oh, oh, very oh, nice. Very thing. nice, Dan. Yeah. Now, this is my first time with a big yeah. canvas. You yeah. guys want the big oh, one. Dan, yeah. you'll have to hang yours beside each other, and then you can have people vote on which one they like better. <laughs> Sometimes it's little. I did a big one. I think I would lose that one. Cassie, where's yours? Yeah. Say something so we can Ooh, see you. Pretty. Oh, pretty. Really pretty, yeah. Uh, yeah. Flowers are different. You're muted, Cassie. I can't see you. Yes, I know, but it took me a really long time to get. Ah, nice. Oh, you even did that. Nice. Good. I, I, forgot um, to, I got some funky yellow flowers on it that I don't like, so I'll just stick something on top of them later. <laughs> <laughs> now, it looks like Zach went a little avant-garde here. Yeah, I told you, he went off-road. He yeah. did a bonsai tree, right? <laughs> that's a, that, he said that's a picture of a bonsai that he was working on in the yard today. <laughs> bonsai. <laughs> we yeah, have, I like, know. what, 300 now? Ooh, oh my gosh. Crazy. I had some little painters behind me. They're done now, but they're uh, <laughs> doing pumpkins, it looks like. Yeah. Cassie, where did your helper go? She's watching the show. You want to see her? her oh, 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 nice. <laughs> you have to make sure and include all the Littles pictures, too. Oh, I didn't see Charlotte Cass. Where'd it go? Oh. Oh, nice. Where is it? Did you see it that time, Mom? Nope. Hold no. it up again. Okay. One more time. Okay. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I don't know where she ran off to. She was watching. Oh, she's not there. Okay. So you sit down with yours, and I'll take your picture, and then... No. Okay, well, I think I'll go ahead and sign off for the evening. Thank you guys all so much. It's always fun to paint. Thank, Thank you Shana. very much. We can forget about other things for a hot second and direct our energy someplace else, and that's always good. So thank you all. Um, remember, you have until 10 o'clock to, to send your picture to me, and then I'll collage them all together and put them out on Crooked Door Studio on uh, Facebook. So thank you. You guys all have a thank good evening. Thank you oh, very much. And then the recording will be available later. I will email you, Joanna, when the recording is up okay. on YouTube. So if you okay. want to go back and watch it later, you can. That sounds good. All Thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.